This video is an introduction to the different graph types and their purposes. There are five main purposes of scientific graphs. Distributions, labeled measurements, time series, relations, and statistical variation, and I'll be showing examples of each. In distributions, we usually prefer what is called a one-dimensional scatter plot, especially if you don't have a lot of observations. Such scatter plots can be combined with a horizontal line showing the median or mean. If you want to show the distribution, you use a histogram, and if you have many observations, you usually use a box plot. Please do not use a bar or column graph to describe a distribution. Here's an example of a one-dimensional scatter plot from one program, and there's another program that allows you to stretch the observations so that they don't fall on top of each other. Here's the same data plotted as a histogram where you can see the number of observation for each value. And this is a box plot. The second purpose, labeled measurements, are graphs where each observation carries a label. Traditionally, these are always bar or column graphs, but probably a dot plot, which I will show, is a better alternative. This is a graph of the Rheumatology Journal Impact Factors in 2013, and ARD is very proud to be very near the top, and as you can see, it's a bar graph, ordered by impact factor. Here's the same data as dot plot, and I like this format a lot better. On the topic of ordering, you can see that the journals are ranked by impact factor from high to low, which is probably the most useful order for this information. However, if you would like the reader to also be able to look up their favorite journal, you could plot the data again, but then ordered by alphabet. The third purpose, time series, well known from survival plots, usually plotted as a step function, as shown here. The fourth purpose is relations between variables, usually plotted in a scatter plot, but also possibly as a matrix plot, which I will show. This is a simple scatter plot with two variables, force applied versus time, and you can see the individual observations as little blue dots. In this case, there is also a trend line plotted through the data. I'm just going to show you a small example of a matrix plot and how they are formed. First, we see a bar graph with three categories of materials, labor and land being plotted over four quarters on the y-axis a way to plot the information, but I can also plot it as a matrix as shown here. Here I've split the information into the four quarters and you can now see the materials, labor and land on the left side being compared per quarter. You can look horizontally across the quarters for each category or you can look vertically and look at the distribution for each quarter. Same information, probably more usefully depicted in a matrix. And then you can change this bar graph into a dot plot to get the same matrix plot with, with a much clearer view of where the data is. Finally, a very important purpose of scientific charts is statistical variation. And in this case, Box plots are much better than what is usually plotted, which is mean plus or minus standard deviation or standard error. The reason is that box plots give you more information. There's also a variant called two-tiered error bars, but I will not go into that here. Finally, here are some graph types you are better off avoiding. The famous pie chart, stack bar, area graph, and 3D. So that's the demonstration of the graphs to use and the graphs not to use.